Today's video will be going over the top things to do in Colorado. Alright, so did you get your city fix? Did you stuff your fat little bellies and break your wallets and your bank accounts with all the money you spent? Very good, because we're heading back out, guys. We're chasing some more adrenaline and we're gonna have some crazy experiences. So, number four in Colorado is cliff jumping. With a huge disclaimer, do this at your own risk. If you're terrified of heights, consider it because it's always good to overcome your fears. But if you're worried about getting hurt, I totally understand. Pussy. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I totally understand, but it's a really fun experience and if you're smart about it and you don't get too caught up in trying to impress people or jump too high up. It's a really fun thing to do in moderation. The place I went to, which I would highly recommend, is Paradise Cove. It's pretty close to Colorado Springs, so it's very easy to access from a major city. So it's a really cool place, it's a small little hike to get there, there's gonna be lots of people, and there's different levels of rocks to jump off of. Don't be an idiot and jump off of the highest one. Start small. If you get a little bit more confidence, go from there. It's gonna be a lot of fun. You're gonna get a lot of adrenaline going. You're gonna feel like you grew as a person if you were terrified, because hey, I, I jumped out of an airplane and it still kind of frightened me a little bit. You look scared. Now, if you're not near Colorado Springs, some other options are Devil's Punch Bowl. This is located near Aspen, which is a really famous like ski resort. Don't do it in the winter though. You might die. <laughs> <sighs> It's funny, Noah. You know, you got a real good sense of humor. And another one worth noting is Black Hole near Two Butts, so. Wait a minute. Black Hole by Two Butts? <laughs> <laughs> so those are a few options, guys. It's a lot of fun, and you're gonna have an adrenaline experience. Adrenaline experience, yeah. You cannot miss the opportunity to go to a national park in Colorado, so that's gonna be number five on the list, is visit one of the four national parks. Now the two that I've been to are Rocky Mountain National Park, which is by far the most popular one. It's located very close to Fort Collins and Denver and Boulder, so you can definitely make a day trip out of it or stay longer if that's something you'd rather do, which I totally understand because they are gorgeous. Now Rocky Mountain National Park is gonna be, in my opinion, the hiking mecca of the national parks in Colorado, period. I really recommend doing an alpine lake hike. Alpine meaning a lake at like a high altitude where you're gonna have a scarcity of trees and uh, biodiversity as far as plants go. I would recommend, if you want a nice easy hike, doing the hike around Dream Lake to uh, Emerald Lake. It's gorgeous, it's easy, it's not gonna take a whole lot of time and you're gonna get a lot of bang for your buck. Sky Pond, this is gonna be a bit more rigorous. The water is gorgeous from the pictures I've seen. Chasm Lake. Bear Lake, these are some other options as well. If you want to do a really strenuous long hike, you can try Long's Peak, but please be warned, this is an extremely brutal long hike. You're gonna have an amazing chance at seeing wildlife. People have seen bears, they've seen elk, they've seen uh, bighorn sheep. Now Great, oh, great Sand Dunes National Park is another amazing national park, which is totally different than Rocky Mountain National Park. This to me is more of an activities park, and the main activity is sandboarding have to do it. It's so much fun. The um, terrain is totally feels like something out of this world. And then yeah, you can rent out a board and have your own experience trying to ride it down like it's that fresh powder breath that everyone raves about in uh, Colorado, but it's going to be that sand. That sand powder breath. If you're more of a historian and interested in like ancient civilization and cultures, Mesa Verde is located in the southwestern part of Colorado. It's right down there, so it's very remote. Uh, if you're gonna spend a lot of your time around the major cities. So, but if it's, that's something that's worth it to you, please check it out. You're gonna see sort of an ancient grounds. I'm not very well read on the subject, but it was something that was on my radar but I never got the chance to do. And there's also Black Canyon of the Gunnison, which is totally different than all the other ones as well. I've always wanted to go, never had the chance. I'm letting myself down, I'm letting you guys down. I'm so sorry. And this is also gonna be very gorgeous with massive cliffs and canyons that you can traverse through and camp and 
experience some gorgeous views and terrain as well. Have you ever been let down by a national park? I don't think so. About the deaths of two visitors at Yosemite National Park in California. I don't think so. Now given that Colorado has plenty of mountains, you're gonna have some high places. And you know what can go from a high place to a low place? Water. Check out a waterfall, guys. You really have to do this. Who doesn't love waterfalls? Perfect time to do this is gonna be late spring, early summer. You're not gonna really see them in fall because everything's gonna be dried out a bit. You're not gonna see them during the winter because everything's gonna be frozen. So the first one that comes to mind is this hidden secret waterfall. I don't even know the name of it. I've looked and I've tried to find it. It's located by Rainbow Hot Springs. So if you wanted to do the hot springs, you went to the Ghost of Springs, you have to hit this one up, guys. It feels like something out of Hawaii. It's free falling. You can walk behind the waterfall. You can get under it and take a shower. And it's located a little bit off of the hiking trail, so you'll have it all to yourself. It's truly magical, guys. Some other options are Treasure Falls, which is another massive hot spring. It's located just off of the highway by Pagosa Springs. This one, you can't really interact with it to the extent you could with the one I just mentioned, but it's really gorgeous. You can hike up near it. You can feel the mist coming off of it. It's gonna be hitting you in the face. That's how close and personal you can get with it, but you can't really take a shower with it. Now there's also Zapata Falls, which is located near Great Sand Dunes National Park. Make sure you have a four wheel drive car. I cannot stress that enough. Otherwise you will kill me once you realize that your suspension and your car got totally messed up trying to get there. But again, you can walk right up to it. It's kind of located in a cave, which is a very unique atmosphere. The water kind of almost seems like it's illuminating because everything around there is a little bit darker and light is coming through where the water is coming through, right? And if you want to visit the biggest waterfall in Colorado, go to Telluride. This is located in southwestern Colorado as well. An easier but somewhat less glamorous option is Boulder Falls, which is located just a few minutes from Boulder. Visit a waterfall, hike to see a waterfall in late spring or early summer if you have the opportunity. And last but not least is you have to visit a mountain town or one of the smaller towns in Colorado. There's plenty of options. So if you're driving around the state to do one of the options I've, or one of the activities I've outlined earlier, Pick whatever one's most convenient. There are, the ones I'm gonna mention are gonna be littered throughout the state, but these are my personal favorite. So any one of these, I think you'll have a lot of fun. So the ones that come to mind are gonna be Vail, one of the most popular ski resort towns, I think in the whole country. I've only went during the summer and fall and I loved it both times. The, um, it has a very Bavarian feel. It has that European or German sort of landscape. The food's great, there's good beer to be drank, cute little boutiques really easy to walk through, so you don't even need a car once you're there. You can either bike around or walk around and have plenty of things to do for a day or two in Vail. Other options is gonna be Pagosa Springs, which I talked about enough on this list, guys. Just freaking go to Pagosa Springs. It is amazing. It's probably my favorite place in all of Colorado. So again, you're gonna have lots of boutiques, small town feel, good restaurants, not a lot of chains, which is a great feel. Breckenridge, this is a little bit of a bigger area, but Again, it has a different feel than the major cities that are gonna be not in the mountains. So you have to check out Breckenridge. Estes Park by Rocky Mountain National Park is another great place to um, spend some time and eat and shop while you're not in the national park hiking and burning tons of calories. And also Aspen is another famous ski town, but again, there's a lot more to meets the eye than just skiing. So you can visit there any time of the year and you're gonna have a totally unique, wonderful experience. All right guys, so that's the list. That's my top seven experiences that you need to do in Colorado, guys. I promise you, if you only have a few days, pick as many as you can without over cramming your schedule and you will have an amazing, unforgettable trip, guys. Unforgettable, not just like, oh, that was so much fun, but like, you'll be talking about it for years. And if you go by yourself, then hey, you're gonna have amazing memories, take lots of pictures and share them with people and they'll be begging you to take them next time. If you have a week or more, I think it's very possible for you to fit all of these in into your schedule, especially if you're staying in a location that makes it easier for you to access numerous amounts of these activities. You can do a few in a day, potentially. That's my guide, everybody. I think it's an amazing guide. Again, I know I didn't include skiing or snowboarding or smoking that dope because I, that's something I really partake in. These are things that I've done and I would do time and time again because I had so much fun, so much satisfaction doing them. So I hope you like the list, guys. Start planning your trips now, or if you're living in Colorado and you haven't done any of these, time to get going because you're gonna have a blast and you're gonna thank me later. So I hope you liked the video. I can't wait to hear from you in the comments. Are you planning a vacation in Colorado soon? Do you live in Colorado? What do you think? 
Does it make you excited to travel again? Please let me know down below. So it's been real guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see y'all soon.